We're now ready to write some data to our database using a HTML page with some JavaScript. So just to spend a second on how the connection to the Firebase is going to work. So we're going to need to include a link to the SDK, which is the software development kit. That's like an include in Python. Then we're going to include a link to, to a JavaScript file that's going to do the work for us. We're going to configure our connection with addresses and API addresses and so on. We're going to initialize the connection and we're going to create a variable to reference that connection. So we're going to be able to call it and work with it. Then we're going to create a variable that's going to reference the child branch within that connection. Now that basically means that we're going to create a branch underneath our top level database. We can call it temperatures or my temperatures and it's under that branch that we're going to add our data. Then we're going to get the data from the user form on the HTML page. So the user is going to fill in a form, press submit and that data we're going to take and maybe along with the timestamp and we're going to finally we're going to push that data up to the child branch of the database which we've referenced above. So that is the process that we're going to go through. It's going to sound complicated but it's actually quite simple. So we can get started. We're going to use glitch.com to write our code um, and you can sign into glitch using your gmail account or any other account. So I'm already signed in with my gmail so I'm going to go ahead Once I'm signed in and you get used to the slightly different interface that Glitch uses, I'm going to click on New Project to get started. And I'm going to go with a basic Hello web page. Now, again, Glitch is going to load our project. And by default, Glitch gives us several files that are pre-populated just to get you started. So you can see there's a readme file. And along the left hand pane you can see the other files that glitch has automatically created so you've got a html page you've got a javascript script page and you've got a css page which we're not going to worry about today so for this video we're interested in our index.html and our javascript page now to start with i'm just going to delete a lot of the stuff in here that we don't necessarily need so we're just going to delete all the various little extra bits And that's all we want is really a header with inside a heading one inside the body tag. So I'm just going to change the name of the header. Okay, so all we want on our page other than a heading is a little box for the user to enter the current temperature. So I've put in the title. Let's go ahead and create our little form. So we're going to need an input box. We're going to need a label to go with it, so temperature. And our input box is going to be of the type text. And we're going to give it an ID just so we can identify it uniquely. Let's call it user data. And if we click on the show button, we can show it in a new window just to preview what it's going to look like. And there we've got our H1 header, we've got our label, and we've got our text box that can accept whatever it is the user wants to put into the database. So the only thing we're really missing is a submit button. So we're going to create that. And this time we're going to create an input type of button. We'll give it its ID. And we'll give it a label. And very importantly, on click. So what's going to happen when we actually click on this button? Well, we want to call a function, just like in Python, except this function is going to be a JavaScript function. Now I'm going to call it form submission. You can call it whatever you wish. So when we click the button, it's going to call that function. Of course, we haven't created that function yet. So there's our preview. We now have our submit button. We can put in a number, hit submit, but nothing's going to happen yet. So 
At this stage, we need to start involving some code for Firebase. If I click back to my Firebase page, I can see this, the code that we talked about at the end of the last video. And you can see all your initiation code. But at the top here, there's an important bit of code. And this links to the SDK. So we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it in here at the bottom of our page. We're going to make one important change to that. We're going to take away dot dash app from the end. And we're now linked up with our SDK. The last thing we want to do in our HTML page is link to our JavaScript file. Now I will use the pre-created one called script.js, but again, you could create your own if you wish and call it something different. So we're just going to create a link to that and that file is going to contain our configuration data as well as our function form submission. So our HTML page is now complete, as basic as it is. The next step is to create our script.js. So if we go in and clear out the stuff that's in there and we're going to pop back to our Firebase database and we can see our configuration information here. And again, we're going to select that all the way down. The only thing we're not going to select is the script tags. And the reason is we're not create, putting this inside a HTML page. We're putting it in its own separate file. I'm just going to tidy that up slightly and separate it out. And what you've got at the top is you've got the configuration data pre-populated, so the addresses and the APIs and so on, and the project ID. Then we can initialize our Firebase app, and then we can write our function. Now, if you look here in the HTML, we called our function form submission, so that's what the name we want to give it here, form submission. And we're going to use curly brackets to enclose our form. Give ourselves a bit of room. So what we're going to do is we're going to send both the current timestamp and the temperature that the user submitted. So let's start off with a timestamp. So we'll create a variable called today and that is going to be created from the inbuilt function date. And from that today we want to abstract some information. So we'll create another variable called Let's call it timestamp. So our timestamp is going to be abstracted from today. And from that, we're going to get the hours. And we can put in a separator for the minutes. And so on. So I'll speed up this next bit of the video. Now, that creates our variable timestamp. So we now need a, a variable that's going to point towards our Firebase connection. So let's just call it mydbconnect or mydbcon. So we're going to set it to be firebase.database.ref. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch within our database. So let's just call it temp branch for temperature branch. Again, it's from the MyDB connect. We're going to create a child branch and that branch we can call my temperatures. So the last thing we want to do, or the last bit of information we want to do, is grab the current temperature from the HTML document. So we're going to use document.getElement. And again, we need to just double check what ID did we call that text box. So we'll flip back to our HTML. We'll look for our input box. And you can see there that we called it user data. Go back to our JavaScript. And it's user data that we want to get the information from. We're going to put it in a variable called current temp. So now we've got our current temp and we've got our timestamp. All that's left to do is to push that data up to the cloud. So our temp branch, which we had created, 
Dog push. And what do we want to put up there? We want to put in a label, first of all, temperature. And we're going to convert what the user gave us to an integer. So we're going to use parse int. And then we're going to use current temp, the name of our variable, dot value. So we want the value of that variable. And the second thing we're going to put up is the time. And again, we're just going to use that variable timestamp. Now that we've got both our HTML and our JavaScript file, we're ready to test our website. I've split my screen. And on the left hand side, I've got glitch open and you can see our script.js and our index.html. I've also opened up a tab for the show, so to preview our web page, you can see that there. And on the right hand side, I've opened up our database. And you can see that it's currently null. So let's test it out. I can put in a temperature, click on submit, and a second later, you see it under our database. And notice that it also has created the child branch, my temperatures. It's given a random ID and inside it's got the temperature and the timestamp with the little separators that we de defined earlier. So that's working great. We can go up and just double check, put in a different number and submit it. And again, another child on the branch. And again, the timestamp and the temperature. We can open and close those branches and we can submit a few in a row. And you can see it's quite responsive and quite quick to register. So that's great. Everything is working on this side of the project. So the last thing we want to do in the next video is we want to create a web page that will retrieve this data and display it back to us.